everyone welcome to the update of monday the 13th if you have just caught up with the stock market and only seen the headline number then you might be mistaken that it was a good day for the markets beyond the top two or three stocks it was actually a very bad day for investors who are long in the market in fact today would have been worst for people who exited the market earlier in the day seeing the deadly one percent fall and then witness a v-shaped recovery in the market with markets actually closing in the green the cpi data just got released 4.83 I don't think government had any intentions of handing over a can of petrol or diesel to the opposition right in the middle of the elections. So no one was expecting this data to be bad this time. After the roundup, I'll walk you through something called Exter's Pyramid, which I also discovered today. I assessed where my investments are using this pyramid and I'll walk you through where my risk appetite is right now with respect to this tool. In terms of market, Nifty closing 0.3% up doesn't mean anything actually. Bank Nifty also 1% up primarily because HDFC Bank and ICIC Bank both were up significantly. Reliance nearly moved in a range of 2%. It closed 0.1% down. However, there were huge fluctuations in Reliance and the market fluctuated with Reliance. In fact, besides Airtel, most of the top 8 stocks actually closed significantly higher than the lows for the day. The VIX made another 52 week high cross 20. I expected to cross 20 actually last week. However, it happened today. Note that the VIX touched 27 or 28 on the last polling day in the previous elections. So we are still about 40% away from those levels. Strangely, in this uncertainty, gold corrected a bit. Probably it was post Akshay Tritya factor. It was below 72,000 today. Crude is still around 83, 84 levels. Bitcoin somewhere between 60, 65. Probably in India right now, election results are really, really spooking the markets. I expect the FIA data to be sell again. The net number may be low. However, the traded quantity, which is buy and sell, that will be phenomenally high today in my opinion. As for the AMFI data, the KYC issues is not that big or maybe it has been resolved. So DIs are getting the money now. DIs would have nearly matched the FIA data, but still the reds and green patterns would have remained same. Note that Nifty is still about just 2.5-3% away from all-time highs. US markets at an all-time high are going nowhere. They are going to wait for major news. They'll react 2-3% up and down on every news. The two big triggers for them continue to be interest rate cuts and elections later in the year around October, November is when they will have elections. In terms of results, I had mentioned my skepticism about Tata Motors in the previous update on Friday. Tata Motors today was down 8.3%. Bank of India results disappointed the market. It was beaten down around 10-11%. It was going up in the last one year only because of the low base effect. It was too low actually for whatever number it was showing. It is not a sound bank at all. You can trade but there is no point in investing. Union Bank, though there was one significant tax-related uptick, but still profit after tax, 19% up, NII, 14% up, 3.6 rupee dividend. I really don't know why market was disappointed by the results. I continue to hold Union Bank of India. I will probably buy a little more and move it to the investment portfolio now. In my analysis, it is among the better stocks in the PSU Bank Indice. Zomato had another wonderful quarter, fourth profitable quarter. This is one stock where my analysis has gone totally wrong. I exited Zomato a long time back thinking it is a bad stock which will never make money. By the way, if you read the documents released by companies, then do go through Zomato's report. They have a wonderful detailed report. I personally found Zomato's investor-centric document to be among the best released by any company in terms of detail and presentation. Today, the best indice was machinery and equipment, Siemens, ABB up significantly. These are real large boys. ABB was up 11%, Siemens up 7%. Polycap gave fantastic results, 5% up. The sector was up 4.5%. What was bad? Automobiles was the worst sector today, led by Tata Motors, 8.3%. I think on Friday, Tata Motors was the largest stock in the indice. Maruti is now back at the top because of the nearly 10% fall in Tata Motors. Coal India down another 1.2%. Telecom sector was bleeding. Airtel down 1.2%. Industower down 0.7%. Vodafone down 0.8%. Let's check software and IT services. TCS held the sector together 1.4% up. Rest large companies were all down. Let's check oil and gas ones. Well, the fall in Reliance was not that big. However, the entire sector was down today. Probably this is the effect of windfall tax, which is hurting the industry now. Integrated hardware and software. Tata Technologies had a better day today. It was up 1.12%. Seems to have found a support at 1000 levels. Nifty 50. Yes, Tata Motors was the worst. BPCL, Shriram Finance, NTPC, oil and gas. So most of the large PSUs came under pressure. This may be related to the anticipation of the election results. What was up? Cipla. 5.6%, Asian Paint recovered today, 4%. 
ओवरऑल मार्केट बेट प्राइस 24 स्टॉक्स डाउन 26 अप इफ यू सी द वॉल्यूम पैटर्न कॉलम मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टॉक्स टुडे आल्सो हैड वेरी शेलो वॉल्यूम्स बिसाइड्स द वन व्हिच वर वेरी हाई अप और वेरी हाई डाउन निफ्टी नेक्स्ट फिफ्टी जोमैटो बिफोर द रिजल्ट्स वाज डाउन द जनरल एक्सपेक्टेशंस वर नॉट गुड इट सीम्स इट शुड गो अप सिग्निफिकेंटली टुमारो बट बीइंग एट 52 वीक हाई देयर कुड आल्सो बी अ केस ऑफ प्रॉफिट बुकिंग डीमार्ट हैज रिपोर्टेड वन ऑफ द लीस्ट प्रॉफिटेबल क्वार्टर्स 2% डाउन एलआईसी डाउन व्हाट वाज अप ABB, Siemens, PI Industries, Nifty, Next Fifty had better volumes than Nifty Fifty. Significant stocks had more than hundred percent volumes. Interestingly, sixty percent stocks now are in the eighty to hundred percent zone when it comes to distance between fifty two week low and high. Asian Paints has recovered, but Berger hasn't. SBI cards continue to sulk. Adani Wilmer still down. Let's check the IT index. TCS held the sector together. Otherwise, the next four five stocks were down significantly. Today, Persistent found its feet, one percent up. LTTS, where a lot of my money is blocked, up one point two five percent. I tried to average down a bit on LTTS today, but the bank account refused. There was no money left in the trading account. Bank indices, SBI continues its downward journey, down one percent. Otherwise, the most of the other large stocks were up. HDFC one point two percent, ICICI one percent, Kotak recovered point eight percent. Axis up one percent. While the private banks were doing well, the PSU Bank Index was down significantly, led by Bank of India minus ten percent. It is not that large a bank, but SBI was down one percent. The second largest is PNB that was down another point seven percent. Overall, the sector was in deep red. My trades continue to be in red. The loss is now seven and a half percent. One advice to many of you who would have read portfolios by now would be that always measure your portfolio and stock performance in percentages, not in absolute amount. This number minus seven point five percent can go up into green in just two or three sessions. There are few stocks here which I am considering moving to the investment portfolio. Mass Financial, I think it will do well over the six months. This is a rural economy related stock, and I think rural economy will do in the next six months. I am also thinking of converting Union Bank, which has fallen a lot. to investment same with mrpl mrpl is among the largest producer of aviation fuel export as well as domestic consumption domestic consumption is really high so i don't think mrpl will do badly right now the problem is windfall tax that will go away eventually i don't think mrpl sells at a loss in fact the profit should be high only just that the government's earnings out of mrpl would be lot higher than they are usually because of the windfall tax based upon that theory i'll convert it into a one or two quarter investment mostly let's jump to extra's pyramid i got most of it correct with respect to my investments there are few things which i was wrong on i have converted significant investments into gold that i have covered many times in my updates i have liquid money in Cash or FDs, and I have taken overdraft on FDs. I have covered that topic in my previous videos also. There are not too many good government bonds available. Most of them are tax saving bonds, which I don't like at all. So I am not invested in government bonds, but I have significant exposure to corporate bonds. I thought these were safer than listed stocks, which is not the case as per this diagram. However, most of my corporate bond exposure is in the NBFC space. Now, NBFC space runs in the rural mostly. 50% of india probably will not get loans again if they default on nbfc bonds i have literally zero exposure on real estate in terms of investments i have some investments which i have written off or kind of don't consider in my balance sheet because that money is blocked i have good exposure on private businesses via something which is called pre ipos so that is high on risk and i had a flavor of that in few cases so i have lost a lot of money on farmeasy for example that company has plummeted also i suffered huge losses when reliance retail was de- listed by reliance industries so yes while tata technology has given good profit and some of the other businesses also are in good profit but this private business part is risky i'll come to my derivatives trade it is bleeding right now but this is very less in size before i jump to my fno snapshot i'll tell you about the mistakes i've made today and these mistakes i've made despite having the experience of many years in the derivatives market so it is very easy to give advice however it is very difficult to follow it yourself especially when you see red or when greed takes over too many lots i did that today i had been controlling that urge for the last 4 5 days but i took too many lots today which amplified my losses i went against the market trend i shorted the market when it was going up that is never to be done you always go with the flow i did not book losses when the losses were increasing i should have exited i did not do that i got greedy i thought that market will reverse which didn't i average lower which is the other part of did not book losses one i didn't sell second i bought and bought more which obviously increased the lots also these are classical mistakes which options buyers make which destroys their 
capital completely. And I did not stop after two, three trades. The general thumb rule is profit or loss after two trades or three trades for the day, stop. The third, fourth trade will always make losses for you. And I went for voting. In Telangana, it was voting day to day. I left trades open with significant lots. And nine out of 10 times, when you leave your trades open, you will return to find losses as if there's someone sitting behind your monitor who will see you missing and reverse the trades. Let's start with the chart first. Markets opened down till about 10, 15, 10, 30. Markets had bottomed out for the day. Then came the recovery. Significant improved till about 115. Remember I say all the time that around 130 markets reverse. That is where I thought that the markets are going down again and that trend will continue till end of the day. But that did not happen. Market recovered. This is where I shot myself in the foot. I got this completely wrong and this is where I kept averaging lower. Finally, markets remained in this zone. But since my lots were for the Thursday expiry, so volatility in that particular option was very high. This is the mistake I was talking about. Three pages worth of trades. This should not go beyond one page. Four, five, six trades at most. Nothing beyond that. Position wise, initial three, four positions were okay. This is where the problem came. I have 16 lots open now. That is a lot. I will close these positions irrespective of profit or loss in the first five minutes tomorrow morning. This is a sin in terms of risk in today's market. If markets open tomorrow, this loss will become 25 30000 within the first 5 minutes the comical part is my equity portfolio was completely down in the day the short positions in the market in nifty were also loss making because three or four big stocks were up significantly when we buy or sell nifty we expect to be buying or selling the market that is not true this is just the top 4 or 5 stocks overall with respect to last week i am at a loss of around 7 8000 right now net loss of 20000 is my limit if the loss crosses that i'll stop trading in fno once again markets are in a zone where it is very hard or impossible to predict where they will go for example if you ask me today whether markets will open high or low it is very difficult for me to predict my bet is on the fact that markets will open low and then go high again just like today but it could be totally reverse also. This is not just me. It is very hard for anyone to predict because large traders are running the market and because of election, the volatility is very high. People are sitting on their edges. Risk appetite is low. People exit positions very quickly. This is a perfect time for large traders to make money, especially the ones who have significant money and who can sell options versus buying options. So if you have limited capital or limited risk appetite, do sit out, don't participate in today's market. It is okay not to earn money, but if you lose money, you could lose significant money unless you can buy more or sell in losses and digest the losses. Thanks for watching. Have a remaining great day. I'll see you tomorrow.